Ah, the Space Shuttle, America's solution for reusable, inexpensive, and easy access to space. From 1981 to 2011, NASA's FLIR shells combined for a total of 135 launches, many of which helped build the International Space Station. But was the Space Shuttle all that was cracked up to be? Was developing the most complex machine ever to fly a good idea? Was the Space Shuttle a mistake? Well, seeing how we've got another three and a half minutes of video to go here, we might as well find out. After an incredibly successful Apollo program, NASA decided that inexpensive access to space was the next step forward. In 1970, NASA Deputy Administrator George Lowe said, I think there's really only one objective for the Space Shuttle program, and that is to provide a low-cost, economical space transportation system. Quantifying the price of a low-cost, economical space transportation system, in 1972, then-NASA Administrator James Fletcher told Congress that development of the Space Shuttle would take approximately $5.2 billion, but each flight would only cost around $10.5 million. So how close were those estimates? Though so slightly over budget, development was in line with that $5.2 billion estimate. But what about the cost of each flight? To adjust for inflation, that $10.5 million in 1972 had become approximately $60 million in today's money. That's reasonable, but in actuality, when you combine the adjusted price of every launch and average it out, each flight costs nearly $1.7 billion. That's 28 times more expensive than predicted. It wasn't NASA's intent to keep astronauts chained to low Earth orbit for 30 years, but with the shells soaking up so much of the funds allocated to human spaceflight, there wasn't much else that could be done. Just a side note, in case you're unfamiliar, low Earth orbit exists from 160 to 2,000 kilometers above the Earth. The highest orbit the shell ever achieved was 612 kilometers up. While this may sound impressive, keep in mind the moon, the destination of Apollo, is about 384,000 kilometers away. So why was the shell so incredibly expensive? Part of the reason was the processing after each flight. Originally, the time it would take to get the shell ready for another launch was projected to be as little as two weeks. The orbiter would get a quick inspection and then made it up again with the external tank and solid rocket boosters. However, as the processing turned out to be much more complex than ever imagined, it ended up taking two to three months just to get the shell ready for another flight. By now you might be saying, it's not all about the money. Fine, I, I agree you can't put a price on science and progress. So at the very least, you might ask, the shell was an advancement in technology, right? While there is no argument against the fact that the space shell is the most complex spacecraft ever flown, it suffered some particularly crippling design flaws. To begin, in many aspects of launch, flight, and landing, there were no survivable abort options. This meant that many pieces of hardware had to work flawlessly at critical moments. And sadly, this wasn't always the case, and this lack of safety was only made worse by a decision for the fifth flight, STS-5, to remove the ejection seats. But design flaws went beyond safety. The orbiter ended up being 20% overweight. This reduced the payload capacity of the shuttle and even rendered it impossible for it to put US Air Force payloads into polar orbit. But by far, the most glaring design flaw of all that plagued the space shuttle was its tiled thermal protection. Each orbiter was covered with approximately 30,000 tiles, and some of these tiles had a habit of falling off as demonstrated here on the very first shuttle flight. On top of that, debris strikes hitting the tiles was also a major concern that was never really solved. The only way NASA could address these concerns was to aggressively inspect all the tiles between flights and during. Now, it'd be unfair not to give credit where credit is due. Take the construction of the International Space Station, for example. There is no denying that the shuttle was the workhorse in building the ISS, and NASA used this fact to justify the shuttle program. But, as the Russians proved with Mir, the modular space station that preceded the ISS, capsules and unmanned rockets are enough to build and supply a space station. But regardless, let's go back to the original question. Was the space shuttle a mistake? Well, the answer to that is... no. The idea of economical and consistent access to low Earth orbit would be a great piece of infrastructure to the American space program, but that's just it, a piece of infrastructure. The shell was not intended to be NASA's post-Apollo crown jewel. It was just supposed to help provide a jumping off point for deep space missions. So there you have it. While the concept of a space shell was good, NASA overpromised and underdelivered. Now that the program has ended, the United States is left without a crewed vehicle. But don't despair. With the commercial crewed program gearing up to look after the International Space Station, and NASA's next vehicle, Orion, waiting in the wings, a return to deep space is right around the corner. Corner.